Today I'm diving into a super cool concept that's key to understanding energy efficiency, exergy. You might not have heard of it before, but it's a game changer. So let's break it down. First off, what is exergy? Simply put, exergy is the measure of useful work potential in an energy source. Unlike energy, which can't be created or destroyed, exergy tells us how much of that energy can be harnessed to do work. Think of it as the quality or usefulness of energy. Now, why is this important? Well, in any process, whether it's running a power plant or just boiling water, not all the energy we put in gets converted to useful work. Some of it is always wasted, and that's where exergy comes in. By analyzing exergy, engineers can pinpoint where energy is wasted and find ways to make processes more efficient. Let's take a quick trip back in history. The concept of exergy dates back to the late 19th century thanks to J. Willard Gibbs. The term itself was coined in 1956 by Zoran Rant, combining the Greek words for from work. Pretty neat, huh? So, how do we measure exergy? Imagine you have a system, like a steam engine. Exergy measures the maximum useful work that can be extracted as the system reaches equilibrium with its environment. The closer the system is to equilibrium, the less exergy it has. When equilibrium is reached, exergy is zero. Let's get into some practical examples. Say you're running up a hill, you're using a lot of energy, right? According to the first law of thermodynamics, energy isn't consumed, but transferred. However, exergy is different. It gets destroyed in non-ideal processes like running up that hill. That's because not all the energy is doing useful work. Some of it is lost due to inefficiencies like friction. This is explained by the second law of thermodynamics. The ratio of exergy to energy in a substance can be considered a measure of energy quality. Forms of energy such as macroscopic kinetic energy, electrical energy and chemical Gibbs free energy are 100% recoverable as work, making their exergy equal to their energy. This means they're highly efficient forms of energy. However, not all energy forms are created equal. Radiation and thermal energy, for instance, cannot be completely converted to work and have an exergy content less than their energy content. This difference is crucial in understanding energy efficiency. So, what determines the exact proportion of exergy in a substance? It depends on the amount of entropy relative to the surrounding environment, as determined by the second law of thermodynamics. Exergy is particularly useful when measuring the efficiency of an energy conversion process. The exergetic, or second law efficiency, is a ratio of the exergy output divided by the exergy input. This formulation takes into account the quality of the energy, often offering a more accurate and useful analysis than efficiency estimates using only the first law of thermodynamics. But here's something even more fascinating. Work can be extracted from bodies colder than their surroundings. When energy flows into such a body, work is performed by this energy obtained from the large reservoir, the surrounding environment. This shows just how versatile and important exergy is in energy analysis. A quantitative treatment of the notion of energy quality rests on the definition of energy itself. According to the standard definition, energy is a measure of the ability to do work. Work involves the movement of a mass by a force resulting from a transformation of energy. If there is an energy transformation, the second principle of energy flow transformation states that this process must involve the dissipation of some energy as heat. Measuring the amount of heat released is one way of quantifying the energy or the ability to do work and apply a force over a distance. Exergy is a unique property because it depends on both the system and its environment. It's not just a thermodynamic property of matter or a thermodynamic potential of a system. Interestingly, exergy and energy always share the same units, typically measured in joules in the International System of Units, or SI. The internal energy of a system is always measured from a fixed reference state, making it a state function. However, some experts argue that exergy of a system changes when the environment changes, suggesting it is not a state function. Others prefer a more fixed definition where the environment is considered unchangeable, making exergy a property of the system alone. From a theoretical standpoint, exergy can even be defined without any reference to the environment. If the intensive properties of different elements within a system differ, there's always the potential to extract mechanical work from the system. This approach, however, requires abandoning the idea that the environment is large enough to remain unchanged by its interaction with the system. 
Assuming the environment's properties are constant, exergy can be defined absolutely, especially useful in modeling systems as heat engines. For example, in a heat engine, exergy can be defined as the energy input times the Carnot efficiency, assuming the low temperature heat reservoir is at the environmental temperature. This definition aids in many practical applications. In information theory related to reversible computing, exergy finds its use as well, synonymous with terms like available energy, utilizable energy, and maximum work. Exergy destruction in a cycle equals the sum of exergy destruction in individual processes. Alternatively, you can consider the entire cycle as a single process to determine exergy destruction. Take two thermal reservoirs at temperatures TH and TC, for instance. The work done by a reversible engine, as Carnot analyzed, gives us the exergy. Even in non-cyclic processes like the expansion of an ideal gas, exergy plays a role. For free expansion, no work is done, but for expansion against a movable wall with no heat transfer, maximum work corresponds to exergy. This illustrates how exergy depends on the process, aligning with Carnot's principles for cyclic processes. In the 19th century, W. Thompson, later known as Lord Kelvin, referred to lost energy, akin to what we now understand as exergy destruction caused by irreversible processes like friction and heat conduction. However, it was not until the early 20th century that methods to compute this lost energy were developed. But let's delve into a transformative application. Exergy-based life cycle assessment, or LCA. Exergy of a system is the maximum useful work possible during a process that brings the system into equilibrium with a heat reservoir. This concept not only provides a deeper understanding of energy efficiency, but also opens the door to innovative approaches in resource accounting. Wall and DeWolf, among other researchers, have shown the strong relationship between exergy analysis and resource accounting. This has led to the development of methods like the Exergetic Material Input Per Unit of Service, or EMIPS. EMIPS quantifies the material input and service output in exergy terms, offering a comprehensive view of resource use. Take transport technology, for instance. EMIPS considers not just the total mass and distance to be transported, but also factors like the mass per single transport and delivery time. This holistic approach allows for a precise strategy to reduce environmental impacts in transport systems. Imagine a future where vehicle weight is minimized, driving styles are more sustainable, tire friction is reduced, and electric and hybrid vehicles become the norm. Enhancing public transport, especially electric rail, and improving walking and cycling environments in cities can further this mission. By integrating exergy-based LCA, we can pave the way toward more sustainable transport and, ultimately, a more sustainable world. Understanding and applying these principles is not just about efficiency, it's about making informed choices that benefit our planet.